Welcome back to Biomechanics Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff, and in this lecture we're going to go over the structure of the knee joint. And at the end of this video we're going to talk a little bit about the four major ligaments, at least the ones that we normally talk about, and some injuries that we can have to them and what might cause those injuries. And then we'll show a couple videos at the end. Here is an anterior look at the knee joint. We see the bone on top is the femur and the shaft would extend upwards. And some prominent landmarks of the femur, we have the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. Down here below the knee joint, the, this bone on the bottom, the larger one is the tibia. Uh, the tibia is the bone that makes much more of the contact with the femur. And over here, the smaller bone, the smaller distal bone to the knee joint is the fibula. Okay. And we also see some important things here. Notice, and I want to point these out, we have some ligaments here. We'll go over more detail on these in a few slides. Right here where my mouse is, that's the anterior cruciate ligament. Uh, right behind it is the posterior cruciate ligament. And then we also see some other ones. Um, over here, this is the lateral collateral ligament. And on this side, this is the medial collateral ligament. Okay. Um, we'll go in more detail on those, as I said, in just a little bit. Um, if we look right here, excuse me, right here, um, we actually can see um, some of the other ligaments even from the posterior side. Again, here's the anterior cruciate ligament. Okay. Uh, we also see, again, on this side, this is the lateral collateral ligament. So this is the right knee joint, as we can see. Here is the medial collateral ligament running this side. And then we have a pretty good look at the posterior cruciate ligament right here. Okay, again, on top we have the femur, and then we also have the tibia and the fibula. All right, um, what we notice here, this is a very important point, and you can see it better from the back side. Notice we have some landmarks here on the femur. Um, here's the medial uh, condyle, and then over here's the lateral condyle. And then down here, on the uh, tibia, we have the medial tibial condyle and the lateral tibial condyle. So the femoral one's up here, the tibial one's down here. And notice that there is this structure in here on either side that's called menisci. There, each one is a menisci. We have a medial meniscus, the singular form, and a lateral meniscus. And actually, we can sort of think about the femur through these condyles sort of sort of indirectly connect with the tibial condyles, but that in between them are the menisci. And the function of the menisci, or a meniscus, is basically to cushion, um, cushion the knee joint so that you don't have um, the bones running on top of bones. Also, it stabilizes the knee joint and it helps distribute the weight, all the weight that's up here. Remember, the knee joint really is supporting our entire weight above that, so our femur, um, our entire torso, arms, etc. It helps to dis it helps to uh, distribute the weight and and make it as even as possible, and that helps to reduce the pressure on the knee joint. Okay, um, whenever we have too much rotation of the knee, we can actually have damage to the meniscus. In fact, um, one uh, famous person in fairly recent news. Um, I suppose it's not too recent, but on the Los Angeles Lakers, Andrew Bynum, their center. Um, actually had a torn meniscus and actually played, I believe, in the NBA Finals with that torn meniscus. And he actually, between games, actually had to get the fluid drained from it because it was so damaged. Okay. Here's a look. Uh, this is a superior view with the femur removed. You can see here, this is the lateral meniscus, and then this right here is the medial meniscus. Okay. And you also have, on this. so this is the point where the uh, femoral condyles sit on either side here. And again, the menisci help to cushion and uh, distribute the weight of the joint so that the joint doesn't get injured as easily. Okay. Again, you can see some of the ligaments. Here's the posterior cruciate ligament. Okay. And then we can also see the anterior cruciate ligament right here on either side, Okay, right there. And then it extends down right there. Um, we can. This is a this is a, a side view of it. We can see the femur up here. We see the tibia right here. We also see some bursa. Here we're not really concerned with too much of the detail, but the infrapatellar bursa, so below the knee or below the patella, I should say. Um, there's some other bursa here, and remember the bursa are just to, they're fluid-filled sacs that help lubricate the synovial cavity. 
Um, here's the joint cavity of the syno with synovial fluid inside it. You can see the menisci. Here's one right here. Okay. Now, one thing that's very important to understanding how the um, injuries to the various ligaments uh, occur is we have to also understand various stances or uh, movements that produce these um, arrangements of the knee. This right here on the left, this is what normal stance should look like. Okay. Now, notice that actually in normal stance, if you look at where the, the angle that the femur goes up at, you can see it's actually a little bit at an angle. See how it, instead of going straight up, it actually goes a little bit laterally um, towards the, the top of the femur or its head where it intersects with the hip at the acetabulum. Okay? Now, if you actually take the legs and pull them out a little bit so that, um, uh, first of all, you see that the knee joint's now unbalanced, um, part, at least the lateral condyle of the femur does not sit directly on top of the lateral tibial condyle. So you have this little space here, and that occurs when the knees are kind of angled outwards like this. That's called a varus stance. And a varus movement is something that produces um, this sort of stance, okay? Valgus is the opposite. You see now that rather than the lateral condyles not sitting on top of one another, now the medial condyles are not sitting on top of one another. And this occurs basically when the knees are angled inwards more so than they are in a normal stance, okay? And this is called a valgus stance. And a movement that would produce this is called a valgus movement. And some people can actually stand like this, but especially when these movements are forced during a particular movement, say in some athletic event, um, these can produce injuries specifically to the collateral ligaments. All right, so this is a table with all the ligaments of the knee. There's a lot of them. We're only going to focus on these first four because these are the ones that are most commonly talked about. We have the MCL, LCL, ACL, and PCL. Notice the first two, the C stands for collateral. So the MCL, as we saw, so the MCL is on the medial side of the knee. The LCL, the lateral collateral ligament, is on the lateral side. Okay, so they're on the sides of the knee. Okay, the MCL mainly is going to provide medial stability and protect against valgus stress. So a valgus stress is something that would produce this kind of movement. And if a movement like this is forced, say you get a blow, um, from the from the lateral side. If you get a blow from the lateral side right there, that will actually cause the ligament on the medial side to snap. And so if you get a lateral blow to the knee, that tends to cause a valgus stress and that will um, tear your MCL. Okay. Now on the flip side, if you have some force for whatever reason that that let's say you're talking about the left knee, left knee right here, that blows it or causes impact from this side, that will cause, tend to cause the lateral collateral ligament to become damaged and tear. And so for that reason, the LCL, the lateral collateral ligament, um, provides lateral stability against varus stress. So it's protecting against varus stress, okay? Now, if we're talking about the ACL, okay, the, the main thing with the ACL is it's going to prevent excessive rotation. Okay, if you go back and look at some of these pictures, notice how, so here, this is the ACL where my mouse is right there. If you can kind of imagine the knee twisting, so a rotation of the femur relative to the tibia, you can kind of imagine that this thing might snap. And in fact, um, extreme rotations to the knee um, will actually cause the ACL to snap. And whenever any of these ligaments snap, you hit the typically hear a popping noise, um, and usually there's intense swelling immediately, usually loss of function, and if any of these ligaments tear, usually you are, are going to have extreme destabilization of the knee. And normally this can require surgery, they're going to have to go in and repair the damaged ligament. Okay, And with the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, okay, this is going to limit posterior displacement of the tibia relative to the femur in all positions of joint movement, okay? So basically what the PCL is going to prevent, and let's go look, see if we can find a view of this. Um, the PCL is basically going to prevent the tibia from moving posteriorly, 
okay, with respect to the femur. So if you imagine the femur staying static, the PCL would prevent the tibia from moving backwards or moving posteriorly. Also, one thing worth mentioning again about the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, in addition, in addition to protecting against extreme rotations, the ACL is going to prevent the tibia from moving anteriorly with respect to the femur. So if you imagine the femur staying static, the ACL is going to tend to prevent the tibia from moving forward. Okay? Um, a lot of injuries, though, occur to the ACL when you have an excessive rotation to it which has a tendency to be caused by when somebody stops on a dime and tries to change direction. So this is really common in cornerbacks in the NFL. Basketball players will have this. Um, I believe Derrick Rose of the Chicago Bulls injured his ACL in a manner similar to that. Um, so a lot of times in agility type movements, when somebody's running, stops, and then in the basically as soon as they stop, they try to change direction that will produce an unwanted and excessive rotation on the knee, and that really tends to aggravate and damage the ACL. And in fact, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to conclude this video with um, a couple videos that demonstrate an ACL tear. So it, a little bit graphic, but um, if you really want to understand what's happening, it helps to actually see it. Um, so I'm going to show those two clips. They're pretty short. Um, and after that's over, then we will um, go to the next video. And the next video is over the muscle contractions of the knee joint. So we're going to look at, say, the quadricep muscles, the hamstring muscles, and the various motions that the knee joint allows. So make sure to join us in that video. Go ahead and watch that, and good luck this week. Thank you. To see that, and you're trying to find out what happens to him. Yeah, looks like you hate, right? Try to, and you're trying to find out what happens to him. the snap of the ball it's low and then as he goes down but as he's trying to get it here mm. you see that knee oh. go the snap of the ball it's low and then as he goes down but as he's trying to get it here mm. you see that knee oh. go